Hello, um, thank you for your interest in the mission object-oriented scripting environment called Moose for DCS World. And in these couple of videos, we are going to explain the tasking framework within Moose. This video will focus on the concepts on the tasking framework so that you'll understand further the different objects that are being used and the different concepts that are working within the Moose framework. This is an overview of the tasking concept. So basically you have command centers working for a coalition. A command center coordinates missions. A mission is a logical goal that needs to be accomplished by uh, different groups who are acting within that mission. And these groups need to accomplish a task. So, you can have Red Coalition, the Blue Coalition, e executing different missions coordinated by a command center. And these missions need to be uh, met by accomplishing tasks. And these tasks are then being executed by different groups who are acting within the coalition. Okay, so this is another view, uh, just to make it a bit more clear. So a command center governs multiple missions. One mission can have multiple tasks, and these tasks can be accomplished by multiple groups. So it's really a very dynamic uh, framework that we have here. Um, and the beauty of the framework is that when you look at the coding that will be explained in later videos, you'll see that setting up such a, a mission and a task is actually not that complicated at all, because the framework will do the work for you. So you as a mission designer can set up mission goals, tasks, and define the groups that need to act within the task using the API of Moose. So let's look at a command center structure a bit more closely. So missions can have multiple tasks. Each task is allocated to a set of group, meaning that a set of units that are acting within a group and then a set of groups can execute a task. Now, when you allocate them, you mean that you can, that, that when, when a player would join that group, right? So that means that that player can be assigned to that task. And once it is assigned, it, 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 this, this task gets alive, it will get activated, but that will get explained later. Um, so a task can be allocated by multiple groups residing within a set group. Remember the set the set uh, entity within, within Moose, the set group. So a task accepts a set of groups. Very powerful. And then the power of that is that now a task can be accomplished in a cooperative manner. You can have, um, you know, 8, 10, 20 players accomplishing one individual task for a mission. You can have the same group being allocated to different tasks. But in that case, when a player joins the group, only the first task that is open to be, or that is planned, will be assigned to that group. So, so that task won't be activated at all yet, until this one is accomplished. Okay. Um, let's look a bit more into what a command center is. A command center is a positionable. So a command center can be a group, a unit, a static, or an airbase. A command center needs to be constructed within a mission script. So you'll have an object called command center that you'll use with a new constructor. A command center is a real object, so it is destructible. So if a command center is destroyed, then all the missions and tasks that it governs cannot be coordinated anymore. 
and the tasks will fail. So you need to ensure that when you're when you have when you're using the Moose framework that your command center is properly uh, protected. That and and if you are in a situation where you cannot protect your command center, then well, I I, I propose to mitigate that by making the command center undestructible within the mission editor so it will always be preserved and your missions aren't in danger at all um, the command center takes care of the communication in the battlefield between the allocated groups so when players are flying within the mission they will get instructions that are being received from the command center targeted to the group the player is flying in and the player himself. Updates can be communicated like a task is finished, a task is joined by a player, and so on and so on. So, a mission. So, multiple missions, as I explained, can be governed by command centers. A mission has a state, right? So, there are four important states to remember about a mission. The first is the idle state. So the idle state is when a mission is not being started yet, it will sit there waiting to get started. It is idle. When a mission is started, meaning when a task is being started, meaning when a player joins a group that is being allocated to a task and it's been assigned to the task, then the mission will get to flagged as ongoing. That means that it will indicate to other players that that mission is currently in progress to be to be met, to be to be executed, right? And once all the tasks have been completed, the task will get the state completed, meaning the mission is finished. It is successful, all right? A mission can be set failed if some of the thresholds are or goals have not been met to make the mission a success, then the mission will be flagged, failed. All right. So, a task. A task is basically same thing as a mission, but a bit more complicated. A task is a process that is executed by what we call a hierarchical finite state machine. Remember the word process because I'm going in a bit more detail on that one later. As I already explained, a task can be assigned to a group within a mission. And once it is assigned, it will be executed following the process that will run the mission or will run the task that is being executed by a player actually a unit so a process is executed by a unit that's being hosted by a player and a task has a state meaning that each achievement within the process will result in a status change but for that one i really suggest you go into finite state machines and have a look there what that what state means let's look a bit closer what process means so Process is really, for each unit within a task, a process will be executed. So when each player joins, for example, you have player 1, 2, 3, 4 joining that group, then you will have four processes running in parallel, running that process. Okay? So first, a task is state planned. And the first phase that always needs to be executed within a task is to accept the task. Acceptance means accept for that group the task to be started. So when the first player joins that group, then that player will have to accept the task and he will be the lead of the task. Once he accepts, the task will become accepted. And then in this example, you'll have the task scenario being further defined by the mission designer. In this case, the task will command the, remember, this, this, this is executed for each unit, so each unit will get routing instructions separately, 
And once the unit has arrived within a zone that has been defined, then the uh, unit or the player will be instructed to destroy certain targets. So there is an account uh, process going on and there's a target acquisition process going on so we can smoke target areas. And once all the targets are being destroyed, the mission will be flagged as a success and the task will be flagged as a success. So, a task is a process template, we call it, which describes that process. And that process has states, so these are managing the transitioning between the various states through events being triggered both internally as externally. What does that mean? The white boxes will change as the process um, increases, as the process progresses for each unit separately. The events are being fired, changing the state from, for example, from here, from arrived to updated, and the red ones are sub-processes. These are processes that are already defined and that can be reused by the mission designer defining that process. So, for example, here is an interesting one. The accept sub-process has two end states. When the end state is rejected, the process will end. When the so because the task won't be accepted, but when the task is accepted, the state will get into accepted, and another process can start. Right. So this is a really powerful concept. Just remember, a task is a pro, has a process template. But once a unit accepts the task, that process template will be instantiated, will be assigned. Right? So what you'll see is that when a, when a player joins that group, process 1 and process 2 will use the process template and will start running for each unit separately. Okay. A running process that has been assigned to a unit of a group is being assigned to that unit. So um, each process runs independently from each other. The group running the task through the individual processes that are being assigned to the unit, well, the communication will still be for one group. This is because that's how, this is how DCS works. However, if you would have two groups Right, running the same task uh, in parallel, then it, you will have two different groups receiving two different communications for the players within each group in there. Okay, so the menu options and the communication will always be on group level. A task has a task process execution as a state, as I said. So, there are different states that can be set for a task. A task can be planned, a task can be assigned, a task can be successful when the task event success is being triggered. So, when a group has accomplished a certain goal, the mission designer can say at a certain point, finish the task, make the task a success. And when the task gets success, the task is finished. It will stop and the players will be informed that the task is finished. So they can select another task. The task can be aborted, which is basically upon the decision of the mission designer to decide, do I want to abort the task or not, depending on a certain event that is happening. A task can be cancelled. So, when a task is cancelled due to external dependencies within the mission, you can use the method cancel of the task to cancel that task, and the task will be finished for those players. A task can get failed, and this is really a semantical decision that the mission designer can do depending on which conditions would I fail a task. Do I want to fail a task at all, maybe even on an open server? You don't want to fail a task 
you want to keep a task ongoing because people will just join at random on a task until it's done. But on a closed server or a squad server or a group of people that know each other very well, a mission designer can define a task that can get failed. So if people are not doing the job well, then that task can get failed and the mission will get failed. So this is a really powerful concept. Now, how this is working, and now I've created is a diagram, a flow, that explains a bit better what all this means, how this tasking mechanism is working. So, you need to really remember and understand that a task is a finite state machine that is running following these states here, state transitions here, and has nothing to do with the unit. But then for each player that is joining a slot, a unit finite state machine process will be started that is embedded as a template within the task, right? And is being assigned to, to run, uh, uh, you know, the process that is being defined by the template for that unit. So once the, the unit accepts the task, the task will get assigned and the well the process will start working and then during the process execution of the task the mission designer can say okay right now the task is successful so i'm going to flag it as a success and i can even call the task process being as a success meaning the task is successful so there are different levels here that you need need to really carefully look at and, and understand. You can fail the task. So the, the task, the unit task can get failed or the unit process can get failed, but that doesn't mean that the whole task can get failed. For example, if you have two, three players executing a task simultaneously and one player is crashing into the ground, then that doesn't mean that the complete task is failed, is it? It means that this player will probably get penalties to, because he went to state failed, but it's still up to the mission designer to, to decide on what conditions will I fail a task. Same for aborted. If people leave the task, so if they, if they leave the slot, then the uh, task does not necessarily get aborted, but the process that's being executed for that player can get into state abort and penalties can be given upon the decision of the mission designer to fail the uh, to, to, to actually uh, provide penalties yeah to that to that player but that doesn't mean that the task is aborted as a whole but you can right so I hope that this first introduction is kind of a warm-up of further tasking uh, missions that will be explained further how to do all of this so there's still a lot of work for me to to really start explaining all of these concepts but i really hope that this high level explanation provides a bit better what tasking means and what concepts are behind uh, please leave your feedback on the youtube channel if you have any comments okay ciao uh, oh by the way yeah forgot that you can um, find me on the Eagle Dynamic forums or on Skype or on Slack.com, right? See you next time. Bye-bye.